family. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. What are we going to do? We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Uh, I love being with you all, whether it's in this building or whether it's online. Uh, and I know you feel the same. Today we're going to be looking at how we should be open to God's plan because as we know, God has a plan for every one of us. And I was thinking about the last few Sundays as we've been looking at Genesis, uh, how God put his plan into action with Noah and with Abraham and with Sarah, and they didn't always grasp and follow the plan that God gave to them. Sometimes they had their own idea of what the plan should be, and uh, they got a little bit uh, off um, the road with it. But God was patient with them and he showed them the plan again and they got back on the road and they followed it. So uh, are you ready to worship? Let's bless the Lord. Let's just pray for a moment. Father God, you are creator. You are God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. And we are here today to worship you. Lord, receive our worship for we have 10,000 reasons to bless your holy name. Amen. Psalm 34 says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises and I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness and let us exalt his name together. So bless the Lord, oh my soul. song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be seen when the evening comes so bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship His soul
new beginning. How often we look for another chance to make a fresh beginning. A chance to blot out our mistakes and change failings into winning. And it does not take a new year to make a brand new start. It only takes the deep desire to try within our hearts, to live a little better and to always be forgiving and to add a little sunshine to the world in which we're living. So never give up in despair and think of, think that we are through, for there's always a tomorrow and a chance to start anew. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for being our Saviour. We are never alone, for you are always with us, and that to bless. We ask that this worship service will be received by many, and that your kingdom will continue to grow here and elsewhere across our town, our country, across our world. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hi there, it's uh, Steve Pearman from Haifa Community to remind our churches in Rushton and Higham that we still hold Together in Prayer each month on the third Sunday evening. At the moment it's on Zoom, which I'm sure you're quite familiar with. It's uh, a very special 40 minutes for anyone from our local churches to join with others to pray. What a wonderful opportunity it is to gather in this way and praise God and lift up our prayers for our churches, for our towns and for our nations. Please come tonight if you can. It's at eight o'clock and you will be most welcome. The Zoom login details will follow this. That clip about Together in Prayer has got out to uh, the churches in our towns of Hyam and Rushton. And I would ask that you would join us tonight for Together in Prayer. It's great to have people from other churches just join us on Zoom and spend uh, 30 minutes in prayer. So please do come and join us if you can. And uh, here is a slide telling you some of the other things that are going on this week. Let me pray for a moment. Father God, thank you that for all that you are doing. Thank you that you have given us so many wonderful things. And Lord, in thankfulness, we want to give you something back. We want to give back our tithes, our gifts, our offerings. Use them to keep Highfield being effective for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father's pure radiance, perfect in innocence, yet learns obedience to death on a cross, suffering to give us life, conquering through sacrifice, and as they crucify, praise Father for give. Oh, what a mystery! and majesty bow down and worship for this is your God this is your God wisdom unsearchable Verses 1 to 14. Isaac and Rebekah. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you are released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant left, 
taking with him ten of his master's camels, loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram Naharaim and made his way to the town of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was towards evening, the time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the town people are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink, and she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Thank you, Sheila, for bringing God's word to us this morning. In a moment, I will just bring the message to you this morning, the story of Isaac and uh, also of Rebecca and how they got together and how God just brought about his plan. Uh, so before we do that, let's just bow in prayer. Our Father God, thank you for this opportunity again to meet and share around your word. And I pray that what I will bring this morning uh, will be something of great benefit to your people and that it may be to your glory. Father, you have plans for each one of us. May we be open this morning to listening and learning from you. In Jesus' name, Amen. You know, we sometimes say things, and what we say, we know what we mean. But what others hear, or what they assume they hear, is sometimes a bit different. And uh, we've been having some cold, icy weather uh, lately, and a wife texts her husband on a cold and frosty morning. And the text says, uh, windows frozen, won't open. And so the husband texts back and says, just gently pour some lukewarm water over it and a tap around the edges. And about five minutes later, he gets a text back from his wife. Computer is really messed up now. Today we're going to continue our series in the book of Genesis. We come to this story of Isaac and Rebekah. And you remember Isaac is uh, Abraham's son. 
the son that, had, that God had promised to Abraham and Sarah many years beforehand, uh, who was born when they were both very old. And Isaac is now a grown man. He's wealthy like his father, and uh, he was to be part of this descendants as many as the stars promised that God gave to Abraham. But if he was going to be part of this descendants as many as stars promised, he was going to need to get a wife. And so Abraham was very old, very, very old now, and very, very rich. And in Genesis 24, it says, The Lord had blessed him in every way. And Abraham and his family lived in the land of Canaan, which would then become uh, where God's people would live. But at this moment, the inhabitants of Canaan worshipped a multitude of gods and followed some rather barbaric customs. So in today's story, it begins with the news that Sarah has passed away. And Abraham knows that it is now time to fully prepare his son Isaac to carry on what God had begun, to carry on this plan. And Sheba read verses 1 to 14 of chapter 24 uh, a few moments ago. And the servant, Abraham's servant, is going to find a wife that God had planned for Isaac. And he prays some specific prayer to God. Uh, did you catch that at the end? It says in verse 14, May it be that when I say to a young woman, Please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And no sooner has he finished this prayer to God when Rebekah arrives at the well where he is standing. And the servant said to her, Please give me a little drink of water from your jar. And you can probably guess what Rebecca then says. In verse 19, after she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they have enough to drink. And verse 20, so she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the world to draw more water and drew enough for his camels. And the whole time, you can just imagine the whole time, this servant is watching her without speaking. And I'm sure he has this tinge of excitement. And I love how the Bible describes it in verse 21. It says, The man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. God answered his prayer. What a, an exciting moment. And as a way of saying thank you for her kindness, he gave her a ring for her nose and two gold bracelets. And then he asks, who is your father? And get this, her father was a man named Bethuel. His father, Bethuel's father, was Nahor who was also the father of Terah, who was the father of Abraham. Have you got this? That means that Rebekah came right from within the family. God had led this servant and Rebekah to meet together, who were of the same family. They were cousins. And it might seem strange that a cousin would, cousins would marry, but in those days it was very acceptable and even preferable to, fam to marry into the family line. It was a very different time to today and we shouldn't put our worldview, if you like, onto ancient culture. Anyway, Rebecca said to the servants, we have plenty of room in our house for you and your camels. You are welcome to come and stay with us. And the servant stopped right where he was. I love this bit. 
the servant stopped right where he was and worshipped the Lord. He said, this is verse 27, if you're following along, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my servant. As for me, the Lord has led me on a journey to the house of my master's relatives. Can you see this? It must be a beaming smile on this servant's face. <coughs> Excuse me. And Rebecca went home to tell her family to prepare for company while the servant followed behind. And Rebecca had a brother named Laban. And the expensive jewellery that now his sister was wearing got his attention. And he was welcome, uh, eager to welcome his visitors. By the way, uh, just as a kind of a, a preview, uh, we'll get to know Laban a little better in the few weeks to come. Uh, when the servant finally arrived, Laban invited his entourage to come in and eat, and the servant said, first, just a moment, before I do anything, I want to tell you why I am here. And the servant explains everything and ask Laban for permission to take Rebekah back to Isaac so that they could be married. And Laban said, it appears that the Lord is in this, so you have my blessing. She may go with you in ten days. Hmm. Now we don't know why the delay, why they suggested wait before they left, maybe it was to say goodbyes, there could be all sorts of reasons. But the servant said, I really need to leave right away. Please send me on my way. And remember, this is quite a journey that the servant had taken to get there and he knew that it would be a long journey to get back again. So Rebecca agrees to this and soon they are going back towards Isaac. And um, Isaac is living in the desert region of the Negev. That's southern Israel as we know it today. And, and one evening he is outside praying when in the distance he can see uh, camels approaching. And he begins to move in that same direction and Rebecca sees him coming and discovers this is the man that she is going to marry and so she covers her face with a veil because that was the custom and we read in verse 67 Isaac brought her to the tent of his mother Sarah and he married Rebecca so she became his wife and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. What a great story. There are two things happening here that I want to point out. Firstly, God's hand was at work in these events as they unfolded. No question. He's putting his plan into place, and he's preparing for his promise to be fulfilled. And he's behind everything that happens. Secondly, each of the main characters put themselves in a position to be moved along by the hand of God. I wonder if we, can, we could say that, that we're in a position to be moved along by the hand of God. God's plan will be fulfilled here. His kingdom shall come and his will shall be done. God will do what God intends to do. The question is, where would you be when God does what he does? Where would you be when he is carrying out his plan? Would you be inside taking part? Or would you be on the outside looking in? Now the characters in today's story made sure that they were on the inside. They were part of God's plan. And they were aware that they were part of God's plan. 
and we can learn something from each of the characters in our storyline today. So let's have a look. You see, our life is not about finding a way to get God to fit into our plans. That's how some people view God. Will you just fit into my plans? Will you do this for me? Will you prepare this for me? Will you? Our objective should be to find a way for us to fit into God's plan. And the characters in this story give us an example to follow how to do that. And if we follow the way that they did, we'll find God's hand moving our life along. For instance, let's look at the servant. The servant, what a task that Abraham gave this servant. I mean, can you, can you remember that the storyline God said to Abraham, you're going to have descendants as much as the stars in the sky, and along eventually comes uh, Isaac, and so Isaac is Abraham's only son. This has got to work. And Abraham is now getting very old and Sarah has died. And so Abraham says to his servant, find a wife for my son, so that God's plan can continue, that they may have many children. And by the way, no pressure, the whole of Israel depends on your choice of woman for my son. Hmm. What a responsibility given to that servant. And he was very careful to carry out his task well. Uh, he checked the details. He made sure he got everything right. He didn't assume, like uh, the husband with the wife text, he didn't assume what was being said. He checked it all out. And he kind of said, now, what if, what if she won't come back here? Can I come back and take Isaac to go to her? No? Okay, okay, got it. I know what I've got to do. You see, when carrying out a task that involves God's plan, we need to ensure we are doing it right. Right? Being part of God's plan is a serious work. In fact, Abraham asked him to make an oath that he would get the job done. And not only did the servant plan and prepare for the journey, taking with him a team, um, he did what also in all of this? What does it say in verse 12 of our passage? He made it a matter of prayer. Verse 12, the servant is saying, O Lord God of my master Abraham, Please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. That's very important. And you say, of course it's important, of course it's important if you're part of God's plan, if you want to see God's plan carried out, that you pray. I wonder, though, if practically that is what you do. Is it important to you that when you think you're going to be part of God's plan, you pray? When you get a lead that God wants you to do something for him, and by the way, you should be getting a prompting regularly that God wants you to do something. It shouldn't be some once in a lifetime experience, it should be very regular. I believe God wants me to do this, I believe God wants me to phone that person or go to that person or do this. But when you get that prompting that you are part of God's plan in some way, are you going back to the Lord each day or before you carry out the task and say, Lord, please give me success today for you. I want to carry out this for you. And I need your strength and your words and your wisdom to get it done. Grant me success for your glory, not for me. And when God came through, he stopped what he was doing. You know this in verse 27? When God came through with what was needed, he stopped what he was doing and he worshipped God. It was kind of, wait, before you're anything else, I want to praise God. 
And so in verse 27 it says, Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham. The Lord has shown unfailing love and faithfulness to my master, for he has led me straight to my master's relatives. He did everything right. But you know, the best thing, the one thing that I love about this little bit of the storyline about the servant, we don't even know his name. We don't even know his name. The story refers to him only as the servant. Why? Because his name is not nearly as important as his task. Even in his prayers, you see that his focus is not on himself, but on his master who he is serving. And God was able to use this servant because he was the type of man who would say, I'm not an important person, but I have an important job to do, and I intend to do that job well because God is counting on me and my master is counting on me. Can you imagine what might happen in our lives if we were able to say, you know, this is not about me. This is about the God I serve. And it doesn't matter about my name. No one needs to know my name or what I'm doing. I just want to be called to be part of God's plan. I don't need to be named or thanked. Just let me do what I'm supposed to do for God and give him the glory, not me. That's the servant's attitude. No wonder God was able to use him. Okay, so what about Rebecca in this story? Alone? When you read this story, you can see why God would use her and why he would choose to bless her in such a wonderful way. Like that unnamed servant, she does everything right. She meets a man when she's at the well to draw water. She doesn't know him at all. She's never met this guy. But when he asks for a drink, she responds with kindness. And then some. Not only when I give you a drink, she says, I want to give water to your camels as well. And when it came to decide whether or not she would actually leave with the servant to marry a man in a foreign land that she'd never met before, she chose the path of adventure. She believed God was in this. And she chose to do it now. Let's get this done. If God is in this, I'm coming. So really, there were two servants in this story. There's the unnamed servant, and there's Rebecca. God was able to use Rebecca because she was a strong woman with a servant heart. There's no limit to what God can accomplish in our lives if we're willing to have a servant heart. And keep in mind that being a servant is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. When we commit to serving others, we'll find God's hand at work in the details of our life. So that's the servant and that's Rebecca. I just want to mention Isaac. He's not in the story much today. But I want to see uh, what we find in this important little scene towards the end of, of this event. He was out in the field. He is walking and meditating. The Hebrew word can be translated prayer, but it also can be translated complain and lament. In other words, what Isaac is doing that evening is he is pouring his heart out to God. He was grieving the death of his mother Sarah, knowing that his father's time was also coming too, uncertain about what the future held for him, and uh, he would faithfully carry out things in his father's name. <clears throat> and so he's pouring his heart out to God that night. And then comes Rebecca over the hills. And the Bible says that he loved her deeply. Now, just to say again, we put ourselves in the situation of that culture, that marriage at the time was more a practical arrangement than a romantic adventure. But God brought these two together and love was involved in it. 
So as we conclude, you know, God had a plan right the way through Genesis. As we've been going through the stories of Genesis through these chapters over the last few weeks, we've seen God's plan. You're starting to see that, right? Right from the beginning. Right from the very beginning of Genesis 1, and we've gone through, we've seen how God's plan is at work. And as we carry on through Genesis, we'll see God's plan is at work there too. And he has a plan, not only for the people of the Old Testament, not only for the people of the New Testament, not only for other people, but he has a plan for you and us. The question is, of course, will you be again there taking part right on the inside of that plan? When you say, what is your plan? I want to be part of it, God. I want to do your will. I want to please you and I want to honour you. It doesn't matter whether my, my name is honoured or not. I want your name on it in this plan. I want to be, have a servant heart to do that. Or will we be just sitting from the outside watching what's going on in the plan? Oh, that's a good plan. I'm great. It's good to see that God's doing that and using that person. We all need to be part of God's plan. We all need to be owning that plan and carrying it out. You know, Isaac wasn't perfect. Rebecca wasn't perfect. We're going to see that in the weeks to come. But there's a reason why God was able to use them and the servant. There's a reason why these individuals found a place in the purpose of God. And we can all thrive carrying out God's purpose. It's being able to say, I am not an important person, but I've got an important job to do in God's plan. And it involves serving God. It involves serving others with all of my heart. Will you do that? Let's bow in prayer. Father God, thank you for this wonderful story that we read today. These events which just unfolded and carried out your promise and your plan. And Father, here we are today in uh, 2021. You still have a plan. You always have a plan. And Father, so many of us don't listen to what your plan is. We, we assume. We put our own ideas into it. But Father, help us to just come before you and seek your plan for our lives, for our church, for our community, for our world. And Lord, let us not sit and watch others carry out the plan, but let us be open and say, Lord, I am your servant. I want to be part of your plan. That you may get the glory, not me. So thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. May we honour you. And maybe one day come before you when you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in to my house. In Jesus' name. Amen. All to Jesus I surrender all. Ah uh -huh.